Hello and welcome to another episode of Masana's Hydronics Podcast. I'm your host for today, Saul. I am the marketing coordinator here at Masana Hydronic Technologies. If you don't already know what hydronics is, it's just the side of the HVAC industry that uses water as a means to transfer thermal energy. Hydronics is generally more sustainable because it's a lot easier to move water throughout a building uh, compared to traditional forced air systems. Um, and it's also more efficient because the energy sources we use tend to be more sustainable as well. Here at Masana, we're all about hydronics. We're most known for our radiant ceiling panels. And the way those work is they're installed behind the drywall of your ceiling. You don't see them, you don't hear them, but we run hot or cold water through them to heat or cool your environment. Since we're so into hydronics here at Masana, we've also developed hydronic controls so we can control various other hydronic systems like the very popular radiant floors you see. Maybe you know some people who have radiant floors, but we also can control things like hydronic fan coils. And that's actually the subject of today's episode. We have some very special guests from Yaga Climate Designers. Um, they've traveled very far to be here, so it's a very special episode. How are you guys doing today? Great, thank you. Doing Great. Super good. good to be here. Awesome, awesome. Well, do you guys want to just go through one by one and introduce yourselves, maybe tell us who you are and what you do at Yaga? Yeah, definitely. Awesome, yeah. Cyrus, you want to start? Yeah, so I'm Cyrus, uh, Cyrus Kangaroo with Yaga. Uh, I'm based out of Vancouver, British Columbia, uh, and work all up and down the western seaboard, uh, providing Yaga solutions to engineers and contractors and architects and all the projects we work on. Awesome, awesome. And my name is Bert, Bert Kriekels, uh, based out of Belgium, responsible for the sales for uh, Holland, Canada, and the United States. Wow. And uh, 31st year at Yaga this year. Oh, wow. Congrats. That's awesome. And then how about you? My name is Raf. I work with Yaga for about 16 years. I'm an engineer. <coughs> um, basically started uh, with the operations in North America 16 years ago and uh, act as a link between our sales organization and the production in Belgium. Awesome, awesome. Hey, so Bert, it sounds like you have been at Yaga the longest. Do you want to go ahead and just jump into a little history lesson? Just let us know who Yaga is. Yeah, go ahead. It's a great history. It was two brothers, uh, Jan and Gaston. That's what the name comes from, Yaga. And they were like, in fact, two like uh, handy guys. They made all kind of light fixtures, fences, anything you could weld or make by hand, they would do. Even a car they once produced completely from from scratch. And uh, one day, somewhere in the 50s of last century, somebody asked them, like, can you also do central heating systems? And they said, why not? You know, let's try that. And in those days, it was all with the heavy heavy radiators, lots of water, big pipes and everything, so a lot of work. And then one day they um, saw an ad or in a magazine, an American magazine in Brussels, um, they saw a magazine where there was an advertising about air conditioning that was like coming from the United States here. Okay. And they said, oh, it's easy. It's like a copper tube and an, and an aluminum fin. Let's try that. And they started practicing that in the garage and um, the rest is history. Wow. Wow. Awesome. And so we've worked with Yaga quite a bit here at Masana. Um, If you go to our social media, you'll find quite a few projects uh, that use Masana controls to manage Yaga fan coils, as well as our radiant ceiling panels. So it's been great. Uh, We've had a great relationship and we have know Cyrus pretty well. Cyrus has been here to our office before. Yeah. And so with that said, Cyrus, I just wanted to ask, do you have any favorite recent projects? I know you send me a lot of the media. Yeah. So there's honestly, I wouldn't say there's one uh, that is really sticks out that the big thing for me is just the diversity of projects. Like we can do everything from a crazy greenhouse renovation in Edmonton to uh, I'm just thinking oh crazy projects in Hawaii that uh, barracks in a dorm room oh, wow. uh, to uh, like everything to high end homes, uh, which we do definitely quite a few of it's just such a diversity of projects and just really hydronic heating and cooling can be used everywhere. Like, it's just not, uh, people just say, oh, no, this has to be air conditioning. And then they'll immediately think, oh, well, that's got to be a split, where you'll see the traditional, like, big white unit that doesn't have to be that. There's something far more sustainable, quieter, hidden away, attractive. And then, yeah, how to make that work on a project is, uh, that's what makes it interesting and make, keeps me, uh, makes me able to wake up and keep doing this day after day uh, with a whole bunch of energy, so... Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, with that said, do you want to just go into and maybe just provide a brief description of what a hydronic fan coil actually is and how it works? I mean, either of you can, any of you can answer this question, um, but just for those who don't know exactly yeah. you know, what's going on inside one of these contraptions. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Well, I, the thing too, like hydronics is 
really easy. Like the technology is not complicated. You can't, and, and if you try to complicate it, it's like you've gone, you've gone yep. too far. Like it's just simple technology. We have hot water or cold water. Take your pick. If it's winter time. It's going to be hot water, summertime, cold water flowing through a tube. That tube has aluminum fins across of it. And then you also have a fan for cooling. That's going to be pushing the air through that aluminum uh, and copper fin tube. And then that's going to be giving you cooling out in the space. That's the fan coil. There's a fan and a coil. And uh, that's really a, in a, trying to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah, that's a good, nice, simple definition. But what Yara would separate from the rest is that we specialize in making it more compact, making it more quiet, and making it more energy efficient. So select the most durable and the most efficient components. Mm -hmm like a fan that is no longer just a regular uh, motor, but we're using EC motors that are very energy efficient, they're very quiet, and they require very low maintenance. So those are basically the, the key differentiators for Yaga, making it as small as possible, as quiet as possible, good, basically, in the interior. And you guys have done a great job, I mean, looking at this thing. Which one is this? This is a Climate Canal, correct? Yeah, you're right. This yeah. is Climate Canal 10. Okay. And I know we're in the States right now, but this is Climate Canal 10, meaning 10 centimeters tall. We don't call it the Climate Canal 3.9, <laughs> uh, 3.9 inches yeah, tall. Yeah. But uh, yeah, 10 centimeter tall. This is a floor-mounted unit. Mm -hmm. And they look great on the floor. And I know you have different um, grill types, right? Yeah, yeah, lots of different grills. But, uh, yeah, so yeah, this is like, I'll go into a architect's office or engineer's office and i'll just like whip this thing around and I'm like whoa okay what was that so kind of a cool uh cool grill like i can honestly talk for 15 minutes just about this grill <laughs> but uh i'm not gonna do that uh like the rubber sides on this this is a pretty big uh nice feature it's not gonna be loud if you walk on it mm -hmm. so like, there's lots of little features of, of this uh of this grill on here and then you have plenty of options in terms of like yeah, yeah. we definitely do um it can lead to some interesting, lots of email coordination because somebody's like, oh, I want this color here. Mm -hmm. But 99% of the time, it's this natural aluminum. Okay. And honestly, it looks great on almost oh, yeah. every application. Uh, it's pretty flexible in terms of like what it'll tie into. Uh, but the whole idea with this grill is uh, this grill's really sturdy, not going to break, but it's also uh, strong enough that it and, and provides some good airflow uh, potential that the fan is able to push that cold air out into the space. That's the whole idea. Awesome. Yeah, they're really cool and they look really nice. Um, and now this is a ductless fan coil, correct? Correct. And so you guys also have ducted versions too? And we recently posted about those on our social medias. Yeah, ducted versions, ducted fan coils, maybe not as um, easy to describe or to visualize because it's like hidden away usually. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's what a lot of people think when they think air conditioning. They just think duct work and things like that. And yeah, there's hydronic fan coil solutions that work amazing for that. And we have uh, the one of the smallest uh, and very, very quiet units. I'm not going to necessarily say we have the quietest. I'm not going to uh, mm -hmm. try to overarch things. But uh, yeah, like the uh, ductless fan coils or ducted fan coils, amazing applications for those. The big advantage with using a ducted fan coil is now you can have like one large fan coil. It gets a lot of capacity. That'll cool a space, give you enough BTU to, to cool one space just from one single unit. Whereas if you use a floor-mounted unit that's non-ducted, you might need to have multiple units. Okay. So that's the difference there is like you have, yeah, multiple units works amazingly. You can now have like one in each room. That thermostat can control each room and zone the room properly. Ducted fan coil, a little bit harder to do. Now, is there a difference between like commercial and residential? Do you see one, you know, do you see ductless more on the residential side and then ducted commercial? Or is there any relationship there? Uh, yeah, it's depends. It's a mix. Like it depends on the application. Like we just, uh, I'm just thinking of projects. Uh, yeah, most of the time we're going to see a ducted fan coil used on a commercial job. Okay. That's yeah. more common, especially on these residential, uh, if we're doing a high end home, uh, we'll do, we'll go ductless because you can get that advantage of zoning. So it's, yeah, let's say the, the kid's bedroom, they want to have that one at a certain temperature, much warmer than, let's say, the living room. You can do that really easily with ducted because they each have their, their own fan coil in every single room. Uh, with a ducted fan coil, it's a lot harder to do. Uh, we do a lot of office towers where they'll just have a ducted fan coil and then just distributed ductwork. We'll just have all these ductworks branching off of that fan mm -hmm. coil. And it's a lot harder to control the air that's moving off of those versus controlling the water flow. 
I think also in regards to comfort, it's better to have multiple units spread out. Like Basaya says, you have more control over the output. But me, even more important, if you look at at the high end homes, is sound levels. Because mm. moving air is something that you will you won't get away without any noise. So if you add uh, small compact units in each room, you can easily control the sound level in a much better way. Awesome. And now would you say that the Climate Canal is the most popular? Is there a more popular version for residential specifically? Oh, it's, I wouldn't necessarily, like, we have a whole slew of have products. So many, There's huh? so much. <laughs> it can make it a little bit overwhelming. And that's, yeah, uh, that's kind of why okay. I'm here. And I'm here to guide the engineers and the architects and the contractors to help them make selections and to use the right product for the perfect application. Uh, yeah, it's, I'm just thinking top of my head, we have a project where they'll have beautiful wooden ceilings and they don't want to mess that up with uh, ducks going across the ceiling yeah. that would look kind of ugly if you had silver duct or trying Definitely. to hide that under a bulkhead. They want to kind of keep that nice wood ceiling attractive. So in that case, yeah, let's put a fan coil in the floor. Keep that in the floor. Ceiling's just not touched at all. Or, yeah, we, let's say you have an attic space. You have an attic that, well, we can put a ducted fan coil in that attic space and have a nice slot diffuser. That'll lead to a really attractive look. Fan coil's in the attic, and then a slot diffuser is distributing the air in this space. Works really well. Uh, or if you have a space like right in this uh, office here, we got some nice uh, space under the windows. We could mount a wall-mounted fan coil in that space. Wall-mounted is actually really popular too. Quite cost-effective to put in. You don't need to deal with cutting floors or mm -hmm. anything like that. You can mount it on the wall. So oh, yeah. lots of solutions, different options for all of that. Awesome. And it sounds like you're very involved with the whole process for all your projects. Uh, yeah. There's You guys is just we're, we go hand in hand. Like it's, uh, yeah, we, uh, I, I try to meet almost every contractor that's going to be turning the wrenches on all these units. So it's uh, very, very involved uh, right from the design uh, trying to make sure that the right because there as, as I just mentioned there's a lot of different Jager products so want to make sure that it's being selected properly and uh, yeah well that's great awesome uh, do you want to jump into the control side of things you know how this relationship with Masana came about oh man yeah <laughs> controls has been uh, so we've been doing this for a good amount of time in, in California and uh, projects that we had this on the controls were kind of dumbed down uh, meaning the the fans on these are beautiful these have the fans we always go for, as Raf was mentioning, that most quietest fans that we can provide. Um, the uh, the big advantage with these fans is that they can modulate. Mm -hmm. You can have a fan operate at eight point five or eighty seven percent or twenty five percent or whatever. It's not just one, two, three. Mm -hmm. And problem with that is uh, traditional controls in North America. They don't have the ability to control the fans that Yaga has. Uh, so we have a fan that requires a 0 to 10 volt signal. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to get too, too technical here, mm -hmm. but the fan requires a 0 to 10 volt signal. Asana has an amazing controller that has a 0 to 10 volt output, and that can control the Yaga fan effectively. You can really fine tune it, micro adjust it. And that's say, fan speed, correct? You can adjust the fan speed perfectly. And um, yeah, your controllers are ideal for that. Projects that we've had them, and then there's the great app interface. You don't see the, like, you just have uh, everything kind of hidden beneath, behind the drywall there with the sensors. It's like, works amazing. Uh, and it enables the occupant to control it on their interface on their phone uh, and adjust the fan speech from their phone. Like, it's, yeah. And then, and then they're also, some of them at least are 24 volt DC power, right? So they can everything that's not ducted. Oh, okay. So uh, the, uh, the, the ductless units like this Klima Canal, the one in the floor, if we were to mount it on a wall, uh, the, the ones where there's no duct connections to those, those are all low voltage. Oh, yeah. So meaning low voltage, 24 volt DC, you can stick the wires against your tongue, they're not going to kill you. You or I could <coughs> wire them, you don't need to hire an electrician. Got it. So, yeah. Awesome, awesome. And so we can power some of these fan coils directly from some of our controls, right? Totally. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah. Next. Um, well, I, I had a question about you guys, you know, supporting these installers and contractors, but it sounds like, yeah, you're very involved. I know for us specifically, anytime we need to talk to you, you're very available, Cyrus. Um, and so it's been great. <laughs> yeah, the, con the, the contractors are totally, yeah, it's, I really enjoy talking to the, the contractors, especially to what I find is that if I talk to them and get it going with them initially, uh, yeah, the first uh, few times, maybe they've never seen a Yaga and they'll be like, what is this Jaga stuff? What is this? Like, That's I've never funny. heard of this. Like, I hear this all the time. I always get that that question. And then they're worried. They're like, oh, man, I don't want to install this. So I try to simplify it. Like, guys, it's just a fan and a coil. Uh, like, let's not overcomplicate it. Uh, and uh, show them that, okay, yeah, that's just regular three-quarter inch NPT connections. You don't need adapters. 
We've really made it as North American as possible. Yet yeah, products manufactured in Belgium in a, in a pretty high end factory uh, with uh, high attention to quality and detail. Definitely. But everything is North Americanized, meaning the dimensions that you're going to get on the installed documents are all in inches. Uh, the threads are all uh, <coughs> North American threads. There's no adapters. And, awesome. Yeah. So custom for our market. Yes. And then, yeah, I watched that video. There was a video on Yaga's YouTube channel of your factory, and it was an amazing video, and that factory looks great. Yes. Um, it was really well put together. So, yeah, kudos to whoever's in charge of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, obviously, being here in California, too, there's just so much. Uh, uh, there's a little bit more forward thinking in terms of using different solutions. So that's why it's like, and, and they maybe have a bit more of a keen eye towards design. So that's where we see, okay, yeah, this nice floor-mounted unit where it's hidden away, that's kind of the, I can see that being used a little bit more. There's a lot of focus on design, and then at the same time, uh, really big focus on uh, respecting nature. Mm -hmm. That's very, very important to Yaga, is we got to make sure, okay, using an air-to-water heat pump that is 100% electric, uh, that enables us to use this technology properly. There's no carbon input in, in this uh, fuel generation and sending hot water or cold water to this amazing that's really what we want to focus on that's great yeah that's, we've come a long way since uh, Rav and me started first like 15 years ago here mm -hmm. um, when we came here to north america people were saying you're crazy america really? is like it's all the only air solutions mm -hmm. yep so hydronics it's like not even three percent of the market so in the beginning nobody uh, believed that we would be successful here Took us a long time to really understand the market. It, um, I think, the first eight years, you're trying to discover the market and uh, gaining the trust of the local partners, mm -hmm. because before that, everybody believes that you will go home again, because you're not succeeding quickly enough. Mm -hmm. But we stayed here. We kept investing in the market. Uh, found local talented young engineers like Cyrus here to represent us. Uh, we also have Alex at the other side of okay. uh, at the east of uh, Alex Nadja. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, he lives in Montreal and covers the east of uh, the territory. And together they are very successful in this. Um, we are happy uh, to see that a company like Messana is also promoting the hydronic heating and cooling because only together we can succeed in doing this. It's a mentality shift that needs to be done. 100%. And I think the new wave of like going away from gas and becoming more and more all electric mm -hmm. is a big shift and it's in everybody's favor i think yeah we spend so much er, so much energy goes towards maintaining a good comfortable environment indoors yes. uh, if we can do that more efficiently we can actually have a significant impact on the climate so yeah masan is all about it too yeah. uh, and it's very evident that yaga is as well awesome great well do you guys have any last minute things we're already coming up on 20 minutes here it's already gone by pretty fast um yeah. Did you guys have anything you want to talk about specifically? Uh, that it's important for us that uh, also we are a value-driven company and that all of the values that Yaga represents, it would take too long. It's a separate podcast to go Sounds good. We'll have another. <laughs> Maybe next time. Yeah. But we are happy to see that uh, other companies like Messana and also uh, engineering companies mm -hmm. um, in the neighborhood here, like they are very um, well working with all of those right environmental things. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are very happy to be represented by companies like you and that the engineering community here believes in our products and it brings us big success uh, for all of us, I think. Yeah. Well, I just want to say thank you guys so much for being here. Thank um, you. It's been a blast. For anyone interested in learning more about Masana, you can find us on social media at masana.tech. Do you guys want to go ahead and announce Yaga's social? Do you guys? Or yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, Honestly, the best way, uh, yaga-usa.com or yaga-canada.com. Uh, and then we are on LinkedIn, Yaga Climate mm -hmm. Designers. Uh, yeah, all the, on all the socials the same way, Twitter, uh, I think Instagram, uh, I think Facebook anymore. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, definitely awesome. YouTube. Yes, and YouTube, YouTube as well, well. yes. Yeah. Yaga has some really good YouTube content, so definitely yeah. check that out if you can. Yes. Sweet. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Thank you, everyone who listens in. Yep. All right. Have a good one.